Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, I am going to be working on this easy knit scarf. At the time of doing the homework for this, I didn't know how to make knit hats, so I'm only focused on the scarf today. Um, That's just something that is really neat. This is called the Steep Diagonal Pattern. So what you're going to notice is, do you see the texture a bit? So when you look at the sample that I've made here, I don't know if you can see it on camera because the lighting is so bright, but there is like rippling effect, just like you would see at a sandbar on a beach. So this is an easy 12 row repeat. And the way that I did it is that I have all of my checklists as they go. So I just drew your lines and then you check, 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 check. What I realized is that rows one and two are similar, rows number three and four five and six, they're in groups of pairs. So the first row is that we change the stitch count a little bit in order to go across. And then row number two um, matches that stitch count. And I'll explain that when we get there. You'll be using a five millimeter size US eight uh, knitting needle. I'm gonna be using circulars today, uh, but you can use the ones with the sticks as well if you want. And we're gonna be using Karen Simply Soft as the choice. This is Karen uh, Simply Soft Speckle, the hat, or sorry, the scarf itself it needs two balls. It's relatively generous. The scarf is approximately eight inches wide by 80 inches long. So if it's too long for you, just stop at any point and you can have that. And if you don't like the tassel work, then leave it off or the fringe, just leave it off. You know, you are the artist at the end of the day. We're gonna get started right away. This is an easy level. I'm going to assume that you know how to cast on. So I'm going to be casting on and showing you all of that steps. If you like to change the size of this scarf, it's in multiples of six, so every six stitches is a multiple. Okay, let's begin by casting on 42. And if you would like to change the size, it's in multiples of six, as I mentioned. I'm just gonna do a small swatch with you on camera. You can cast on in any preferred way that you would like to. And I'm just gonna do a twist and transfer on. And I am going to get that done. So either um, do 42 or any multiple of six. I'll be right back. So I'm now going to begin rows number one through 12. I'll do it once with you with the explanation, lots of it, and then I'll do it again without all the extra explanation. So when you reverse the video back um, to play it over and over, you can have the more simpler version. Well, we're gonna start off with purling. So we have to make sure we go underneath this and go in the top side and purl. So we're gonna purl the first three. So we have one, two, and three. The next three are going to be knit three. So move this yarn in behind and knit the next three. And this is one, two, and three. Selfies barking at the air. Okay, so we have our first group of six. That's a multiple of six. So let's do the next multiple of six. So you're gonna put the yarn in front and purl the next three. So we have one, two, and three. Then move the yarn back and knit the next three. You're going to repeat this all the way to the end of your line. Okay, so by the time you get to the end, the last six will be um, purling the next three because that's keeping in the sequence. And then you're going to knit the final three that you have. So move the yarn back and knit. And this completes row number one. Yours will obviously be bigger, but that's what you have. Let's turn and begin row number two. So I'm just checking this off my list that I did row number one. I can never remember, so I have to do that for myself. And so now we're gonna begin number two. So number two is the second pair uh, set. Okay, so one and two work together as a pair. So what you can tell is that the last three, when you turn it around, it looks like it's a pearl. So one, two, three. So these here are going to be a purl, the first three. You're going to notice the stitches when the, after you get a few rows will be very obvious to you what you need to do. So you're gonna purl the first three. And then 
You see how this looks different? These are knit, these are pearls. So you're gonna knit the next three. So move the yarn in behind. So one. So you won't necessarily have to manically count if you can identify that. Do you see how it looks different? See the horizontal line? So then the next three have to be pearl. three have to be a knit stitch and you're going to do this all the way across right to the very end and okay. do you see the pearls that's been my biggest hang up with uh, knitting is not being able to look at the stitch and know what it is um, but I'm not even two months into this thing and I can do it already so that makes my life a lot easier the last three will be a knit stitch. And this completes row number two. Okay, let's turn and do row number three. So I checked it off my list already. So number three um, is the new set of two. That, so three and four will, will work together. So in order to get the diagonal to shift, row number three is the shift of that. So you're gonna see that you have three pearls here. So the first one is going to be a knit stitch. Everything is still groups of three, but the first one has to be a knit stitch to begin. And the way that I remember it in my head is that the next three have to be a pearl. And then the next three are a knit stitch and you keep alternating between the two. So once I get the first one set up, the rest of them are pretty easy. So I'm gonna purl the next three. So we have one, two and three and then you're going to knit the next three move the yarn behind and knit the next three so we have one two and three let's look at the stitch identification so we are going to purl the next three so we have one two and three so do you see that these three are knit stitch? So you're moving the purl over by one. So we have purl three, so we have one, two, and this one here was a knit stitch, but now it's gonna become a purl. And now the next three are a knit stitch. So you have these two that are knit stitch and this purl that happens. So then these three become a knit. So you're changing the direction of the stitch work by doing that. The next three have to be a purl. So I just figured out that I just have to go right to the end and just figure out what's next. So if these three were purl, the very last two must be a knit stitch. And if you look at the pattern, that's the truth. Okay, there's just not three in a row anymore because the third one was actually the very first one that we started with, with the knit one by itself. Let's turn to work and do row number four. Check that off your list. Number four, we're going to match exactly what you see. So the first two have to be a purl stitch. So do you see the even numbers on this one here requires you not to think about changing the, the directions or where they are. You just can look at it and know. The next three have to be a knit stitch. You can see that one, two, and three. They're already a knit stitch. That means the next three, what are they? Do you see the horizontal lines? They're, they're gonna be a purl. So one, two, three. So that means the next three are knit stitch. So we have one, two, and three. Pearl for three. So we have one, two, three. 
knit stitch for three. One, two, and three. And then the last one has to be one purl by itself when, when you get all the way across. Okay, let's turn to work. Check that off and let's do number five. So five, because it's a odd number, is going to be shifting over a little bit. So you're gonna start seeing it, it's, it's shifting in this direction there. So we're going to knit the first two. So we do the first one and you see this was a purl, but we're making it a knit this time. And then everything then turns into the grouping of three like we used to have. So now you're going to start and you're going to purl the next three. So we have one, two, and three. And then you're going to knit the next three. So we have one, two, and three. Purl the next three. One, two, three. Okay, we'll change it back. Knit the next three. So one, two, three. Okay, and knit the next, or sorry, purl the next three. So one, two, three. And at the very end, the last one here is a knit one. So just right at the end. Turn to work, check that off the list. Let's do number six. Okay, let's begin number six. You're going to purl the first one. So number six is an even number. So you're just matching exactly what you see. So we're going to purl the first one and then everything is in groups of three after that point. Okay, so then you're going to knit the next three. So one, two, three. Okay, purl the next three. One, two, three. Knit the next three. One, two, three. Purl the next three. One, two, three. Okay, knit the next three. So one, And then the very final two have to be a purl two. So one and two. And this is number six. Turn your work and let's do number seven. Number seven is going to be a knit the first three. So we have one, two, and three. And then purl the next three. So we have one. two, and three. Okay, knit the next three. So we have one, two, three. Okay, purl the next three. One, two, three, so one, two, three, and then finally purl the next three. So one, two, and three. And turn your 
work. That was number seven. Let's do number eight. Number eight. We're going to knit the first three. One, two, three, and then purl the next three. One, two, and three. Knit the next three. One, two, three. Purl the next three. One, two, three. Knit the next three. One, two, three. Purl the final three that you'll end up with in the end. Okay, let's turn our work, check that off the list, and let's go for number nine. Number nine, you're going to purl the very first one, and then knit the next three. And so that begins your sequence of three again. So knit three, so one, two, three, purl the next three. One, two, three, knit the next three, one, two, three, purl the next three, so we have one, two, The next three. So we have one, two, three, and then the very final two at the end will be a pro, the next and final two. That was number nine. Check that off in the list. Turn and let's go for number 10. Number 10, we're going to knit the first two. One, and two, and then your sequence starts here. So purl the next three. So we have one, two, and three, and then knit the next three. So one, two, three, okay, purl the next three. One, two, three, knit the next three, one, two, three, purl the next three, so one, two, three, and then finally at the end, it's one knit, one by itself. And that was row number 10. You can start seeing the texture, and let's begin number 11. Number 11, you're going to purl the first two. One, and two, and then knit the next three. So your sequence starts with the three, so one, two, and three, and then purl the next three. So we have one, two, three, okay, and then knit the next three, so one, two, three, purl the 
x3, 1, 2, 3, and then the next 3, and 1, 2, and 3, and finally the last one at the end is 1 pearl. That was number 11. Turn your work, and let's begin the final row of the repeat. Finally, number 12, you're going to knit the first one, and then start your three sequence there. So you'll pearl the next three. So we have one, two, and three. Knit the next three. So we have one, two, and three. And then pearl the next three. We have one, two, three. And then you're going to start with knit, knit three. So one, two, three. Pearl the next three. So we have one, two, three, and finally, you're going to knit the final two that you'll end up with. And this was the end of row number 12. Just like you see there. So this is the end of one sequence of the repeating. Hopefully you can see the texture, the lighting's not too bright, and you're going to turn your work. And we're going to begin row number one again, and it's not going to be as detailed, and I'll just explain as you go. And let's begin rows number one through 12 one more time. Let's begin row number one without a lot of explanation. You're going to purl the first three, knit the next three, purl and knit, purl and knit, and it's all in groups of three. So please do this all the way across, purl for three, knit for three. I'll be right back. In row number two, you're going to purl the first three, knit the next three, purl and knit, and do that all the way across. That'll be row number two. So let's begin number three. The first one will be a knit stitch by itself, and then you'll start your sequence of purl three, knit three, purl three, knit three, and then the very final two will be a knit two. Please do number three now. Row number four, you'll start with purling the first two, and then you'll start your sequence of three. So knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three, and the very last stitch will just be purl one by itself. Please do row number four now. Number five, you're going to knit the first two, and then start your sequence of purl three, knit three, purl three, knit three, and then the very last one on its own will be a knit one. So please do this for number five. Number six, you're going to purl the first one, and then you'll start your sequence of knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three, and then at the very end of the number six, there will be purl two. So two on the, by themselves here at the end. Please do this for number six. Lucky number seven is that you're going to knit the first three, purl three, knit three, purl three, right until the end. So do number seven now. Number eight, you're going to start off with knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three, and you'll do that all the way across for number eight. Number nine, you're going to purl the first one and then start your sequence of knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three, and the very final two will be a purl. Do this for number nine. Number 10, you're going to knit the first two and then start your sequence of purl three, knit three, purl three, knit three, and at the end, you'll have one by itself and that'll be a knit. Please do this for number 10. Let's begin number 11. You'll start off with purling the first two and then you'll start your sequence of knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three, and then the very last one is gonna be one purl by itself. Please do this for number 11. And finally, number 12 is that you're going to knit the first one and then start your sequence of purl three, knit three, purl three, knit three, and then at the very end, you'll end up with two by itself and make sure that you do your knit twos at the end. So this is it. You want to go back now to row number one. You can use the video chapters 
to go back. And if you just want the sequence that we just did, it's without a lot of explanation. So just click that, or you can look at the time marker on screen and just scroll back if you wish. So please do this until your scarf measures about 80 inches. I'm gonna show you how to cast off next. So I wanna show you how to cast off. So you have to be at the end of a row 12 to do it. You can really do it anytime, but number 12 is what it says, says. So I can see that the first two here is a pearl, and these are the knit stitches, and then three pearl, and etc. I wanna match what I see. If I cast off in the same way for every stitch, it's gonna look wrong. So when I go to cast off, I'm gonna start here with the pearl, and we're gonna pearl first. And shift it over to this needle here. We're then going to purl the next. So I'm matching what I can see. And once this one's done, you want to position this one over top of the needle. Okay. So the way that I do it, I'm going to put the yarn in behind first, just, it will be easier and just grab the first one. And when you pull, make sure that the, the one that you're working with, the latest one will not come off with it. So you may have to pull on this strand and it helps pull that stitch backward onto the needle and just shift it over the top. Now the next three are a knit stitch. So I'm just gonna knit first and then grab the first one. And again, hang on to this strand right here and just pull and don't allow this to go over the edge. And I'm gonna knit the next one because it's a knit stitch already. And this is allowing the sequence to go right to the end instead of just having one um, stitch out of alignment right at the end. So if you knit all the, did the knit stitch all the way across, the ones that will that are in purl format will look wrong. So these are purl, so move the yarn in front first and purl. And I just, I'm temporarily just putting it in behind just so that I can hold on to it so it doesn't slide off. And then just put it back to the front and purl the next. And therefore it takes that sequence that you've been playing with. And if you drop it, no big deal, don't freak out. Just reset. I want to leave this in the tutorial just in case that you think that I'm always perfect, which I know you know that I'm not. Okay, we'll put it back on and we'll retry. So we're going to purl. And then shift it in behind just to get it out of your way. And then take the first one over top. This one here is also a pearl, so move that yarn back in front and do it. I'm just putting it behind to get it out of the way. Okay, the next three are knit stitches, and so then you can leave the yarn behind and do that. And so do this kind of concept all the way across, and therefore it will match right to the edge on what you were doing instead of having the edge look like it's wrong. So please do this all the way across and see me on the other side of this in just a moment. So eventually you're going to come all the way to the end and do the very last one. It happens to be in pearl format for me. Okay, just take the yarn in behind and pull that second one over. There you go. And therefore this last loop, just pull up and on a little bit. So you're going to cut this yarn and you need it long enough so that you can throw it through a tapestry needle. But before you do much of anything else, just pull your needles out of the way and just put this loop, put this through the loop. Okay, and that will lock it from un un coming, coming undone. So do you see the way that we did it? It looks like it goes right to the edge. So now we're going to use a tapestry needle to hide that in. Okay, so we're just gonna go in and then what I want to do is that both sides, it's reversible completely, but what I'm going to do is just take it through the underside of the stitches. So I'm just going to take it through. Okay, so it's, okay, so I want to kind of just kind of peek at it, make sure that I'm getting inside the stitches without coming too much on the outside. Okay, 
Okay, I can live with that. Okay, and then going back in the opposite direction. And it helps if you split the plies. Just don't go between the strands because it'll fall out. And some people debate whether this is even a smart idea. But, you know, you got to do what's right for you. And then just coming back a third time. And that should never fall out on you. So you can decide to add some fringe or tassels or whatever you want. Or if you're going to plan on washing it frequently, probably leave it off. And this would be then how you would do this scarf. So it's really neat, lots of texture, and just take care of that first and that you did. And because you used two balls, you'll have like a, a midway through as well to, to take care of. This is it for today, and we hope that you enjoy. And this is the easy knit scarf. Have a good one. Bye-bye.